Right, well, thank you very much for coming down. Good to see you still, still here. Didn't go away. Uh, everyone can hear me okay up front? Yes? Over, yeah, thank you very much. Over and above the noise of the racing cars. Absolutely fabulous event here at Silvers and Classic. It's been an amazing three days. Um, I've been here all three days. There's been so much activity on the track. I hope some of you have caught some of the action. Uh, did anyone here put your hands up in the air see the Super Touring car race yesterday? Yes, you did. Absolutely amazing. They've got the old racing drivers back in their old cars and they've just become kids again. And they are smashing each other to pieces. It was absolutely fabulous. John Cleland uh, come from fifth to third. It was an amazing race. And then later on we had the, uh, the historic Formula One cars. Uh, anyone see those? Yes? Wow. I mean, you can forget that new modern Formula One. Those electric things. They were driving around in 1.6 Priuses. Now, there, they were like they were going to explode the cars. They were so fantastically loud. Um, but the noise become really draining. It becomes so loud for so long, but amazing. And you're going to see more of that today. Uh, so thank you very much for coming down to my car clinic. We run one this morning. Uh, this is just a chance for you to sit down, relax, take the weight off your feet, and listen to stuff about cars. Because I like talking about cars. Hands up here who watches Wheeler Dealers. Wow, that's all of you. That's great. I'm for, oh, and over the back. Um, I've got some news that I'm not allowed to share. They told me that they want to be first with the news, being the big company that Discovery Channel are. Is anyone here work for Discovery Channel? No, that's good. Okay, so the news is, um, the new series starts on the 25th. That's not a secret. The news, 25th of August, just three weeks. New Wheeler Dealers, number eight shows. Yeah, that's quite good, isn't it? Some good cars coming up. Um, but the big news is, me and Ed, we just signed a deal for the next four years to make 80 more shows. How good is that? That's good, isn't it? So somehow, after they made that announcement and told me, they then said, so you've got to find 80 more cars. So I'm like, okay, well, we've just, we're just about to celebrate our 100th car. In this next run, you're going to see our 100th car, which is a, a very special edition of Wheeler Dealers. Uh, we do the London to Brighton veteran car run in a 1903 rack. This is a car with nine horsepower and one cylinder. And it's the most, most heroic drive you've ever seen. We took the car from Haynes Motor Museum, we took it to the workshop, we fixed it up, and this is Ed using these normal tools. No, Ed had to use a blowtorch, he had to use leaded paint. And we actually done a process called plimming. Anyone know what plimming is? No? Plimming is where you take a wooden wheel, and you put it in water to let the wheel, wheel swell up in the water and then you give it some heat and then put it back in the water so you're trying to get the wheel to swell up and lock itself back into place. So Ed, rather than fiddling with the spanners, was doing plimming and he never thought he'd say that in his life. At the end of the programme, it's fantastic because we get the car finished, we do the London to Brighton and I'll just share this little story with you. We're going up Clayton Hill, which is the big thing on the London to Brighton veteran car run. It's where every Everyone is going to break down. Everyone says, oh, wait till you get to Clay Neal. Oh, you've made it up here so far. Once you get through Rygate, Clay Neal, Clay Neal. That's all we heard about, Clay Neal. So it's a two-mile climb up Clay Neal. Uh, me and Ed get to the bottom of Clay Neal. I look at him. He looks at me. He's behind the wheel and he's going, no, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. I've fixed the car. We're going to make it. We start going up Clay Neal and the car's going, ka choo ka choo ka choo ka choo And then it goes, ka choo ka choo and Ed says, get out, get out the car. So I get out the car in my full Victorian garb and I'm running beside the car. Okay, it looks like the cameraman is crying. He's filming backwards. And he's saying, it's the, if we slow mo it, it's like a scene out the right stuff. He said it's the most heroic thing he's ever seen in his life. But then the car goes, ka -choom, ka -choom, ka -choom. And then Ed gets out the car. And we're both out the car, Ed holding onto the steering wheel, running up Clayton Hill. But the car gets all the way to the top, goes ka -choom, ka -choom, ka -choom, ka -choom, ka -choom. We both turn in, <laughs> away we go. We made London to Brighton in nine hours, and then after we give the car back to the museum. Yeah, thank you.
So that's a very special treat that's coming up, and that's in the next run, starts August the 25th. Now, who wants to see a car? Yay! Of course you do, that's why we're here. So we're going to get a very special car up on stage, because this is one of the original sort of British muscle cars that was lightweight, fast, it was definitely furious, and pretty loud. Uh, let's get up on stage to TBR Vixen 2! Is a lightweight, very fast, and very nimble little car. Look at that rear glass. That's amazing. Right, let's get the chap out, give him a microphone, and we're going to do a handshake now. This is the way it works. Hello, sir. Come and stand forward. Come and stand here, right here. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. That's it. Microphone up. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Everyone, say hello to Andrew. Absolutely love That's it. the way that works. So, Andrew, this is a uh, 1969 TVR Vixen S2. For those of you out here who don't know what this car is, this car is basically a lightweight fiberglass. It's made of plastic, effectively. Lunchbox. L yeah, it's like a big lunchbox. That's a good description. Um, and it's built on a, a chassis rail. So, underneath you can, you've got a separate chassis, big engine. It's like a race car, actually, with a body double of it. So tell us about the car, how long have you had it? I've had this car for 18 months. Um, this car actually doesn't have as big an engine as uh, Mike thinks. It's only got a little 1700 GT, Still as, you fast would, enough. as you would find in uh, Mark 1 Escort. Um, but the uh, same car is also built in uh, a V8 spec, which would have had the original 289 engine, same as Mike's. Yeah, must and the must Mustang engine. So you can imagine um, that little lightweight car with the engine out of that big American Mustang dumped in the front of it would have been pretty fast. So, you know, at some stage when mine is finished, I'll give you a straight line race with your Mustang. Uh, yeah, and I think I'm going to win because that car basically weighs the same as a dry J cloth. Yes? Or, as I like to say to Ed, it weighs about the same as a basket of soup. Uh, yeah, the car is, is pretty much weightless, and, uh, and that's what's good about this car. Now, the things to look out for on not only uh, a TBR Nixon, whether it's a Chimera, a Tuscan, or whatever, any late TBR, or any car made like this, so whether it's a, a Corvette, a Stingray, any fiberglass body that's over a chassis, the good news is they're really, really great to work on, because these are cars that are not monocots, which means it's all together as one. These are cars that you can separate the body from the chassis. You'll probably find, I don't want to, you know, say the wrong thing, but you'll probably find it's got a dozen bolts that bolt the top half of this car. Eight. Eight. Eight bolts, that's all it is. So there you go. Eight bolts that bolt the top half of the car onto the onto the chassis that's underneath. And if you've got the right facilities or the borrow work Stead because then you can work on the chassis. And the weak point of these cars, because let's be honest, Mr. Rust, he isn't going to get this, is he? He's never going to attack these wheel arches. He's never going to get the bottom of the door, which is where you'd expect these old cars to go. He's never going to get the front wheel arch. He's never even going to get round the headlamp ring. Mr. Rust isn't going to get those because this is plastic. What he will get though, with a vengeance, is he'll get the chassis underneath. Now, the early ones of these cars were just painted. With TBRs and uh, Corvettes and cars like that, is to separate the body from the chassis, get the chassis soda blasted, and then put the car through uh, what they call um, uh, a heat treatment, and then repaint the bodywork, uh, sorry, the chassis back together. And when you bolt it back together and it's galvanized, it will never rust again. And that's quite fashionable with one of these cars. Lots of people powder coat them. Powder coating's great, only if it's done correctly. Really, it needs to be galvanized before it's put back together. Um, but it, it should Just be. On, on one point there, yes. like some, the, the fashion at the moment now, or a lot of people are doing, is cold sink plating, yes, and, then, about that. and then powder coating. Cold sink plating, which means it's a rusted it's, it's, it's a cold dip, yeah. rather than the heat, because if you put it into a hot sink, you get warping in the chassis, whereas if you put the cold dip in, you might, um, yeah, um, that's good advice. This particular car was just, the chassis was repaired um, and hammerite painted 
and this particular car was restored by a guy called Alan Bell um, up in Yorkshire who actually has a linkage here with Silverstone because he managed uh, the single seater cars up in Donington for Silverstone Racing and he built this for himself and uh, after building it he decided he would sell it and it, uh, it went to Germany and uh, it was in Germany for a couple of years and sadly the gentleman who bought it died of cancer and it sat in, in, in a probate and in a garage for over a year and then suddenly came on the market. Now one thing that I will like to say today is my husband so much the school is the benefit of being a member of a club. Being a member of a car club is fantastic. I don't know whether Mike's joined the Mustang Owners Club. I'm an honorary um, member. But, um, you know, if he was, they would have sorted out his alternator problem already they this did, morning. This morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. However, joining a car club, if you haven't got a car classic car here today, and you're thinking of buying one, before you buy one, join the club that you're thinking of buying the car for. Speak to members, go to members' meetings, get advice. I managed to buy that car within 24 hours of it coming on the market. I didn't view it. But through the club, I was able to speak to Alan Bell, find out what he'd done, find out how it was rebuilt, all the things about the car. And without that knowledge, I wasn't able to pick up the phone to Germany and say, here's a bright I'll take it. Now, clubs give you that benefit. Um, the, the, the nice thing, the amazing thing actually, when I went to pick it up, a little story, Alan said to me, he says, I've made a hidden floor in the passenger seat well of that car. And in there is all tools, spare fuel, uh, fuel pump, all sorts of things are in there. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if it's still there. When I went to pick it up in this gorgeous little old-fashioned type dealership in, in Germany, and I went to check the car over, I went and pulled back the carpet, done the clip, pulled it out. The guy who was selling it to me, his eyes popped out of his head because he didn't know the things were in there. And there was two or three hundred pounds worth of tools and parts. <laughs> <laughs> that he, he would have probably helped himself to. So, you know, clubs are fantastic. We've In the TVR club, if you're ever thinking of getting a TVR, fantastic. Um, and I'm sure other clubs are the same. We've got two situations at the moment. One person who crashed his car recently and uh, didn't have really the money to repair it and the insurance value was so low and within 24 hours a few phone calls ran to other club members we put together all the parts some money and he was able to start rebuilding his car and I know that another one down down in Cornwall they've just done this for somebody else don't mind Mike it's not Mike's show <laughs> thinking about buying a car, there's a resource of information out there, whether it's on the internet, car clubs, and there's like-minded people like you that are interested in these cars. I've had problems with my car, and I didn't know what to do, so I go online and research it. Sometimes I talk to the angry giant. I think you know who I'm referring to. We call him the angry giant because he's always off camera, he's always throwing spanners. I'm always doing that, or always doing that in the workshop. Um, but tell us, what's a car like this? Is it a bane keeping it on the road? Is it difficult to maintain, difficult to run? People out here probably know that TVRs haven't got the best reputation for reliability. And Wash uh, your mouth out. I know. I'm saying people, not me, haven't got the best reputation for reliability. But now, I always say, with TVRs, I say all the problems have been ironed out. Everyone's fixed them. Everyone who's got a car over there, it's a great car because it's got a new, improved component to mean that it's now reliable and it drives like a toy. What's this like? What I, what I can say to you, Mike, is electrics was a, was a big problem. As you well know, when yep. you, did, you did the two that you, you did on wheeler games. Yep. Um, but however, most cars that have survived this long have been looked after by people and developed and done work on. This particular car, when it came out, it had two fuses, it might have been four. This has 16 fuses. Um, when Alan did it, he decided this is going to be bomb-proof, 
He has a fuse for the left-hand indicators, a fuse for the right-hand right one. So he's oh, thought it's, about it. It's, it's crazy. And that's exactly what I'm saying. These people, like Alan, he thought about where the problems are and they've repaired the problems. So don't be scared about owning a classic car, especially if it's been through good ownership because most of the problems that they've had have been ironed out by the previous owner. And they usually could. Um, what's this like to drive? What's it like to be behind the wheel of? An absolute pleasure. Um, she redlines at six and a half thousand. She's was running the other day at 101 at 4,500 revs. So technically speaking, I could take her to 125, 130. Um, she cruises along. Came up this morning from Chertsey to here in just under an hour. Um, cruising Fantastic. at three and a half thousand revs. So beautiful to drive, steady on the road. Um, they talk about kickback on the steering. I never really noticed it on this. This has been set up. I'll be honest with you, I don't know if these people agree with me, but seeing it sat here on the stage, I think it looks more appropriate if it was out there on the track, giving it some, don't you? Looks like a proper, put a number on the side. Well, did you not see them in the GT racing I did see yesterday? them in the GT racing, yeah, but this looks like it should be out there competing. It's such a, a, a pleasurable thing to look at and to, and to talk to you about. If people want to go and find out more about TVRs, about your car, where about that's you're TBR. TBR stand is just straight over there, the other side of the uh, Rover stand. Um, and there's plenty of cars to look at. The old, a few of the older ones, plenty of the more modern ones, and the stand there. And there's always somebody there that would be happy to help and advise you and talk to you. Fantastic. Well, listen, I really appreciate you bringing the car back on stage. Let's get you back in it. Let's hear it as it goes off. Ladies and gentlemen, give it a big round of applause. That wonderful. TBR Vixen S2, 1969. Not a lot younger than me, that car, and it looks a lot better nick than I do, doesn't it? Sounds lovely as well. Top man. Well, there you go. So you learned a little bit there. You learned a lot from him. He didn't know when to shut up, did he? Bloody hell. It's my show. He's like that all the time. He was good, though. He was good because he gave you some really good, solid advice. We're going to be running these car clinics in between races all day. So in the meantime, if you want to nip off, go and have a look around, please do. Make sure that you drink plenty of water. Kids, water is so oxidated. It's a drink. We had lots of fainting people yesterday. Sun cream on. Make sure you've got plenty of sun cream on. Enjoy the rest of the day. I'm going to be... Right here, for now, on the stage, if you want to come and get your picture with me, you want me to sign something for you, uh, we've got a, load of, a lovely lady down here, Nicola, and she will see you round that fence and you can come up, take a picture with a nice backdrop, and it'll be an absolute pleasure to meet you. In the meantime, I've been Mike Brewer, thank you very much. Shake your hands. I just want to shake hands with triple British rally champion and my hero, Mr. Mark Higgins. Hello, Mark. You all right? Good.